So we are entering into the last few chapters in the book of Exodus. And this is the time in Torah where the orders are given to build the tabernacle. The tabernacle is the portable temple, if you like, that will uh, come along with us, travel with us through our wandering in the wilderness. We don't know it yet, but it's going to be 40 years. And we are called upon to build together that tabernacle, this tent of meeting, the place where God comes to dwell in our midst. And we, we show up. Each and every one of us take what he or she has, whatever little, whatever they could gather as they left Egypt and bring that to be included, to be used as material to build the tent of meeting, to design the tent of meeting. It says in the Torah, everyone whose heart was uplifted and everyone whose spirit was moved contributed their part to the Holy One in the building of the tent of meeting. You know, one could read this verse and even in its pithiness to discover in one sentence the meaning of one's life. You know, of course, we can't take this literally. We never do. If you've been here just a couple times, you know that. And if you have, if it's your first time, I think by now you figured it out. We can't take anything literally in the Torah. This is not about a story of something that truly really happened. This is not history. This is metaphor. This is myth. This is there to teach us universally what is true of each of us as part of our human experience. And this could be the mantra for you know, uh, our life path because the tent of meeting is not that pithy structure, you know, five feet by five feet where God seems to be dwelling. The tent of meeting is where we are. The tent of meeting is creation itself. This is where we meet. This is where we meet ourselves. This is where we meet ourselves with a capital O. This is where we meet our self, capital S. This is the tent of meeting. And we, each and every one of us, is called upon to participate in creating it, in manifesting it, in evolving it, in healing it, in right now fixing it. And how do we do that? Well, the Torah tells us. You can only do that if your heart is uplifted. You can only do that from a place of your spear, spirit being moved. You can only do that if you bring the whole of who you are in the moment. You can't do that if you do it from being stuck in the thoughts, in the story of separation. If you try to do that from the story and the thought of separation, Unfortunately, it might show up in harmful ways because then you will want to create something in your ego's image. And that's not what we are called upon to do. We are not called upon to build a, a world to manifest creation from a place of selfishness and self-interest, greed. Because when we do that, just look at the window, you'll know what you get. That's what we get. Our rabbis read this verse, and, and especially the mystics. The mystics understand or, or read in the uplifted heart, in the moved spirit, the voices of the angels, the voices of the angels within us. You know, the rabbis, the, the mystics tell us that each of us has four angels part of our being. Four angels that surround us, four angels that, that permeates our self, our, our very being. Four angels that, that, 
They didn't have the word yet, obviously, some hundreds of years ago, but there are four angels that really these days we could we can understand as archetypes. But they didn't know the word archetype, so they call them angels. And it's fascinating, you know. The four archetypes, the four angels that that are are that through which we move, through which we have our being. One of them is Gabriel. Gabriel is the archetype of the sacred warrior. Sacred warrior. Then you have Raphael. Raphael is the archetype of, of the healer. The healer. Then you have Uriel. Uriel is the archetype of the visionary. And the fourth angel that is part of our being uh, is Michael, Michael, Michael. And that's the archetype of the sage, of the teacher within. And so if we're going to bring our whole self into creating the tent of meeting, into creating the indwelling presence of God, into realizing that this, this creation, this earth is the manifestation of that, of that oneness, then we have to bring all our angels, all our angels. But we know that each of us has, a, has one angel that is a little bit more dominant than the others, maybe one or two actually. I mean, you could hear based on just naming the names that you gravitate toward one or the other. You know, there's a lot of um, members of Bet Aleph that are in the healing arts. I suspect that, as I was mentioning, Raphael, they felt, they felt a pull of the heart. Maybe that is the dominant, the dominant angel within you. Let's, let's take a minute, uh, just a minute to, to kind of deep dive into what are the angels? What are they? What are, are their characteristics? Those, those archetypes within us. Gabriel. Gabriel. The tasks of the sacred warrior is to show up, it is to be visible and to empower others through leading by example, through setting direction to showing uh, a, a kavana, an intentionality. Gabriel, the, the inner warrior, offers a full-bodied presence and charisma. That's that voice within us. The, 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 the charismatic place within that takes a stand for what we believe in, for what, for what we trust, for what we want to see uh, evolving in the world. Gabriel is the, the leader inside of us, a leader of people, a politician within, the leader of troops within, the the captain of industry, but also the social activist, the movement leader, you know, the, the, the revolutionary within us, the one that is never afraid to take on the biggest challenges face on. That's Gabrielle within, that's the, that's the inner warrior. Maybe you can relate to that one, maybe that's one that is dominant within you. Raphael, Raphael, the, the healer, the healer, what's, what's his task, what's his job? Well, Raphael is the healer, right? Raphael is, is the one that is there to help us always uh, make connections to, uh, to the heart space, to bring meaning and to connect us always to the center of love within ourselves. The way of the healer is is the way of the caretaker. The way of the caretaker, the way of, of the one who seeks the welfare of it, him or herself, but also the welfare of others, the welfare of the environment in, in which we have our beings. The, 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 the archetype of the healer is one which cultivates, cultivates gratitude within us that keeps our heart open. 
the one that pushes us to continue to be inclusive, to be welcoming, to be embracing, you know, to validate others, to validate ourselves. It's also the one who removes the, the obstacles that prevents us from loving ourselves and loving others. That's, that's Raphael. Uriel. Uriel is the visionary, the archetype of the visionary. Uriel, Uriel stands in absolute truth. That's, that's his center, that's her center, that's, that's where it, uh, Uriel starts. Uriel tells the truth, but without blaming, without judging. Not judgmental truth, it's just truth. The three pillars of Uriel are authenticity, integrity, and truthfulness. And that's where it moves. That's where it has its energy. That's how it moves through us. Uriel, Ur Uriel means the divine light that, that, that illuminates the path forward. It is the discerning, the discerning self within. It is the intuition, the intuitive self, the intentional self. It is also the part of us that is deeply creative, that sets goals, that looks towards the future, that, that seeks to bring our dreams, our, our gifts, our talents, our vision to be manifest into our life. That's Uriel. That's Uriel within. But because it is the one who shines a very bright light, it's also the one that doesn't buy our BS. It's also the one that pushes us to step out of our own shadow and tells us, stop pretending. Stop acting as if you are this false self. Be truth. Be truth to yourself. Be truth to others. Break free from denial. And then there is Michael, there is Mikael. Mikael is the archetype of the sage, of the teacher, is the spiritual guru within, is the one that is there to help us to break free from all those attachments, you know, from, from this need to control everyone and everything, to liberate us from fear, from tightening, to open us, to open ourselves. You know, Mikael means the embodiment of the divine. It is the embodiment of the divine within. It is the voice that keeps telling us, you are that. You are that. Stop pretending you are other. You are that. You are that. Let go of your musts, of your shoulds. Let go of your attachments. Let go of your need to control. Release, relax, step into the flow of energies of the universe. It is your birthright, your inheritance. That's Mikael, that's Michael. And you know, like I said, all of us have the four within us, but at different times in our life even, um, one of them may be more dominant than the other. I love that the rabbis always come up with sets of four. I mean, Passover is upon us. And we'll see, like, the four children, the four questions. The, and I'm wondering if there's a connection, if the four children actually are not also four archetypes. Something to explore together next month. So that's how we are called to come, to come to build the tabernacle, to come to build the tent of meeting, the, the indwelling places of the divine, to come with all our angels, 
and to bring what we have, to bring the, the uniqueness of our being to the moment, to the place, to the space, to, to, to this, to now, to our life. And you know, the tent is in great disarray. The tent is falling apart, my friends. We've gone so far into the other direction that, that we don't even know if there is a way back. And we turn on the news and we feel completely overwhelmed. There is so much to do. It needs so many patching in so many places, socially, nationally, globally, politically, economically, racially, genderly, sexually, you name it, it's, it's all up. And we look at everything and we say it's too much. And the mind goes blank. The mind goes, I can't, there's, there's, there's nothing I can do. And therefore, oftentimes we just resign ourselves just to not do anything. But that's not what the Torah portion is telling us. The Torah portion is telling us you have to contribute. You have to bring your peace. You have to bring your angels together with you so that we can, we can change this. Pick one, one thing, one thing that, that you have that is with you. Pick one thing from your house and bring it to the tent of meeting. We'll use that. That's what the Torah portion is telling us to do. And that's what really we are invited to do. There's too much. So pick one thing. And the way it works is that pick the thing that you know that your dominant angel will thrive doing. Because when we work at something that is aligned with the deeper aspects of our being, then we excel, then we truly contribute the most that we can. But we have to be aligned with our angel. You know, we can't... We can't Start something that is not part of our dominant angel. I'll give you the example in the Torah. In the Torah, a man by the name of Betzalel is, is selected to lead the, the building of the tabernacle. Right? He's, he's the architect. He's the, he's, the, he's the guy who has the Ikea map and tells everybody, here's where the peg goes. The screw goes, bring your tapestry, your whatever you have, we'll, we'll go there. Right? He's not, so the Torah says he's imbued with divine spirit. But I mean, I'm, let me tell you, he's not bringing to the job he has, Raphael. I wouldn't help him. He's not bringing to the job he has, he's not bringing um, Mikael. Nobody needs a teacher when you're leading construction, he's bringing to the, to, the, to the work, which is why the divine selected him, uh, Uriel and Gabriel. He's bringing the visionary and he's bringing the taskmaster, the, the general, the leader, right? And because he's bringing that, then he's able to be in the flow of his life, in the energy of his own life, and, and from there to lead the people. So sometimes we do reverse. We look at what's out there and say, oh, I'm going to do that. Maybe that's something I can do. But I would invite you to do the opposite. I would invite you to find your angel first. Find your angel. Where are you moving from? What is energizing you? What is the, the, one of the four archetypes that actually is your dominant aspect? And then match the angel to a task. Mask the, ma, ma, match the angel to the one thing you would like to contribute to the world through, through yourself, through your being. That's the way we need to do it. Then we'll have the energy for it. Then it's sustainable for us because we're not fighting it. We are aligned with it. Lo alecha hamlacha It says in Pirkei Avot, it says in a, 
in the Ethics of the Fathers, one of the, one of the, Talmud, the Talmudic tractates, Lo alecha you do not have to complete the tent of meeting. You don't have to finish the whole thing. You don't. That's not the point. But you cannot desist from doing your part anyways. You cannot desist from doing your part anyways. Don't worry about finishing the whole thing. That's not it. Do your part. Find your angel. Amen.